Welcome back to the show. It's still Bloggers Forum here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Abraham Tipa, and I am doing this with Abdul Karim Ibrahim. He's a columnist. Nenebi is also a columnist. Right, so let's um, cross over to Councillor Lutrot and then get some response um, to some of the concerns that have been raised. Councillor, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. You, you, you mentioned that um, a research was conducted. Uh, who conducted the research and what was it about? Well, when you said a research was conducted, there's a lot of material on people who are, being, who are victims of rape. You can just go and Google and look for it. It's there. The attitude of people who have been victims of rape, they are, what is happening to them, the way they are behaving now, is a material that is on the net. So I can't be point and tell you, go and read a uh, social and social chapter from this. I read why it is there. Okay. You, you've been tagged as a rape apologist. Uh, some are saying you are justifying aggression of rape with, with, with your comments. What's, what's your say on that? What? What is called rape apology? Some, so you, are, you are encouraging rape. You are making it seem as if rape is something nice. From which angle? No, you are encouraging from which angle? Have you gotten the opportunity to watch the full video? Yes. Did you hear me saying that your father being a pastor and not reporting the rape, the rape is not a check issue? Did you hear that? Yes. What if you cut portions of people's interviews and their videos? You end up getting what you want to use to gratify your personal vindictiveness. You understand know what I'm saying? Mm. So, what is it? Anybody who is descending now will go and watch what the content is. From which particular angle are we discussing? You understand know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you, and you, you, have, you have the letter too that we read. The letter that we were discussing. That a married man, a married woman for 10 years, it has continually have sexual intercourse with her victim who victimized her and raped her 10 years still in marriage and everybody thinks that she is wrong and i say she told the husband straight ahead it's because of the 10 years of marriage i have not enjoyed anything from you but i enjoy it for my records so once you take the thing out of contest once you decide to look for answers out of contest this is how it will end for you there is a campaign to ask media outlets in Ghana to stop giving you the platform uh, to spread what they say is your damaging message to the masses. Are you aware? It's demonic attack. Because we are speaking truth. My brother, the, the fact is that we don't sit unfortunately on any channel to force people to listen to us. One, we also don't come and sit on any channel to counsel anybody. We come and speak to issues, and it's not the first time I'm talking to you. It's a discussion, and these are my opinions. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. So whoever is listening, I have a target market. If what I'm saying doesn't concern you, why do you think uh, it doesn't make sense? Who says what you're saying makes sense? What what particular law has the boy blocking under the, 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 the laws we have? You understand what I'm saying? So mm. if somebody breaks a law, so they see a media house, do entertain me. For what? So a media house brings me to a studio we are discussing, then they give me a manuscript to read. They say you are influencing people me. negatively. What do you call negative influence? After this, there have been a lot of people who are rushing to come and seek for help because they are practicing wrong social vices in their marriage. When you bring me for a radio station, who loses it? It's the world that they're talking, the whole world that loses when I go to here. But there's more media. We'll still let people know the truth. What will you say if you are asked to take a break from, from the spotlight and do an introspection? Nobody called me into the spotlight, so I'm not taking a break from the spotlight. Well, let the one who called me tell me, son, take a break from the spotlight. That he's not said that. All right, thank you, Councillor, for speaking to us. So, um, Karim, obviously, um, Lutrot seems unapologetic. He... He's unperturbed about the comments. Yeah. But what do you say to that? Uh, I'm, I'm, it's, it's pretty obvious. I'm not surprised. Uh, because if you've followed what he has done all along, I think that he's been very calculated, very deliberate about it. And so this is not, a, this is not somebody whose comments you can consider as say, a slip of tongue or somebody who uh, made a mistake. Mm. I mean, this is, this is him. 
this is what they say brand. This is his brand. And it is a very acerbic one. It's, it's one that um, projects him as a provocateur. And so that is essentially who he is. So I'm not surprised that he would stand by those comments. Because this is not the first time he has said something controversial, or maybe rightly in this case, um, inappropriate because and very offensive and and that is what keeps him in the media he's realized because what he sells is counseling mm. that this is somebody who has some knowledge and expertise in advising people but he was also very intelligent to realize that he he's not so great at that i mean if you wanted counselors we would probably be looking at um uh, dr Riafia kenten and the rest from the university of ghana who are professionals in that space and so he knows very well that to be able to keep himself in there, he should do exactly what the Shatawalis, what the, I mean, you would know all of them, mm -hmm. what they do. And so essentially, he is um, a psychologist in the showbiz sense of it. And so there's no way that anybody should expect that somebody like him. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you are aware of um, Alex Jones of Infowars in the US, that is him. He's made a lot of money from simply peddling falsehood. So coronavirus will come and he will say that, well, this is not real. This is something that the Chinese government has sat somewhere, want to take over the world, and, and, and thousands of people go out there and watch him. So that is the kind of character we are looking at here. And there are many of him across the world. In, in Malaysia, for instance, there's a, there's a young chap who calls himself a professional provocateur. He just goes around offending people and, and makes a lot of money from it. So the media appreciates that. We understand that fully. And that's why we engage him. As Nene mentioned earlier, it's, it's about crowd. It's about interest. I am sure that merely by titling this episode of Bloggers Forum with something Councillor Lutros in it, yeah. I want to believe that you get more views than you have ever had in, in, the, in the course of this period that you've been doing this show. That's how it is. So the moral question then would be, is it okay for the media and for he himself, Councillor Lutros, to continue to benefit from this very negative attitude and all of that? And the answer, obviously, if you're coming from the moral point of view, would be to say no. But what is also quite clear is that it pays the bills. Mm. And the lawyers have spoken to this. To the extent that he has not done anything criminal, it would be very difficult for anybody to remove him and all of that. I mean, everybody's chasing him to get a response. He, he, he has been saying that um, he, it appears people are taking him out of context because um, oh, nah. <laughs> the, 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 the basis for yes. that conversation was yes. a lady who is married yes. but still goes back to someone who slept with her earlier yeah. and so that's what he says that uh, people who 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 have been raped everyone enjoys it because if you did not enjoy it why do you still go back to the person i think that's completely silly i mean if he if he if he appreciates the subject he was speaking on and is anything like the counselor that he thinks he is mm. he should know very well that there's there's such a thing as as coerced consent so People, I mean, it, there's, there's enough publication on this. So people who were abused when they were kids, even people belong to a certain sexual orientation today, merely because of the fact that that is something that they were put into at a point when they were children and all of those things. Mm -hmm. So for whatever it is, I mean, people cling onto their own abusers and all of that. So if you understand that, you cannot use that as grounds to then explain this point away. Mm -hmm. Because if you appreciate consent, you would know very well that it would not be rape if people liked it. So then the fact that somebody goes back to somebody who abused them, I mean, again, people practice BDSM. I mean, they just like pleasure from the pain that comes with it and all of that. There are different spectrums when it comes to some of these things. So for anybody who has the, the slightest of information or knowledge about this you would not be making that conclusion that that he is coming to so i don't believe that it is the case that people have misunderstood him mm. i think he's obviously a pervert who is just riding on some of these controversial things just to make money and you know, that's what it is Nene, 
do, 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 do you expect an uh, apology from him? Uh, an apology from him? Yes. Him. Must if, he apologize? If I was, should he apologize? If I was him, I won't apologize. If mm -hmm. I was his PR advice, I'll advise him to apologize. Because the moment you apologize for anything, you've lost... Uh, You've lost your relevance. Even when almost everyone yeah, is saying Yeah, the moment you that. apologize, you've lost your relevance. Because that means that um, people cannot engage you again. Mm. So from a PR perspective, it's a bad idea to apologize. So yes, like he rightly put, uh, pointed out, he is doing the, taking the right PR approach by not apologizing. However, is it, should he apologize? That question also... I don't have a yes or no answer for. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because this 2028 cancel culture, apologize for everything you say culture that we are living in, I am 0% for it. Mm -hmm. Because the moment you start telling people to apologize for every silly thing they say, it's like you are empowering uh, the cancel, not cancelers, the Cancel, cancelers. I mean mm. the C A N C E A L. Yeah. Yes, mm. people who like to cancel people for having any position they don't agree with. Yeah. I think that I hate those group of people. And I don't want to do anything that will empower those group of people by feeding them by you know apologizing for any time somebody says anything down, right? Mm. Mm. Anytime anybody is stupid, they don't have to have to apologize to the internet for being stupid all right so we cross over to speak with seth mousy asafo he's a licensed clinical psychologist a lecturer at the university of ghana medical school a lead psychologist at um, calm center to get his views on this issue uh, thanks for joining us sir you're welcome so as a psychologist um, who engages victims of of um, rape and several other issues. How do you digest this? Well, um, I, I think that uh, it's, it's a bit insensitive to say that all rape victims enjoy the act. I mean, in the process, okay? Mm. Um, I think, basically, this is what we call the rape culture, okay? Now, the rape culture is a mindset that perhaps because somebody um, during an act, okay, may act maybe get wet or get an erection or maybe moan or something of that sort it sort of means that they're enjoying the act but there are two very different things that we need to understand okay mm. there's something we call physical excitation physical excitation has to do with the way that our organs function okay as a sex organ when it is stimulated any sexual stimulation will cause it to react the reaction is normally what you see Okay? Mm. But that does not in any way mean that the person is enjoying it or that the person has consented basically. All right? mm. Now, one of the things that we we'll normally do would be to make a, a comparison of an act in cohesion and an act without cohesion and subjectively have people rate to see if they say that the level of pleasure was the same. You find that it is never true. Now, there's a concept that we call arousal non-concordance, okay? Mm. And basically, this is as a result of what we call conditioning. Humans are conditioned to react in certain ways to certain stimuli. So, as a result of the conditioning, things happen, but that does not in any way mean that we enjoy it. Interestingly, working with people who have been through um, some form of rape or sexual violence, one thing that comes out very significantly is a lot of them, as a result of the anxiety they face, partly due to stigma and partly due to the fact that they've been violated, okay? Mm -hmm. They are unable to deal with that process to the point that psychologists, we call something defense mechanisms. They adapt defense mechanisms. Now, these defense mechanisms prevent you from experiencing anxiety, mm. okay? So, basically, most of them will have what we call a repression, where... The, the thoughts and the feelings surrounding that particular event, okay, mm. are stored in their subconscious mind. So it's as if it never happened. For some instances, okay, not all instances, but for a lot of the instances that we have seen, that's something that happens. So I've had to work with people 
who could have gotten married and before getting married they've always said they were virgins because in, because the, the reality is the rape incident that took place some years ago which was which is usually in their earlier years okay mm -hmm. had caused them to feel so much anxiety their mind in order to protect them hid it away from consciousness only for it to resurface at the trigger of a sexual encounter with their husband mm. so i've had a client who has actually stabbed the husband i've had a client who's bitten off the husband's ear because it reminded them or it killed back all the memory so even if in that instance the physical sensations are causing physical excitation it does not in any way mean that psychologically and emotionally they are within the act or they want to do the act mm. so that becomes very erroneous to make a statement to say that all rape victims enjoy it is not true okay thank you so much for your time and uh we we so much appreciate it you're welcome all right so that was um mr seth mousi asaf who is a licensed clinical psychologist and lecturer at the university of ghana medical school and the lead psychologist at calm center